honor thy seed. You see that? It's through Christ we have conversion, redemption, salvation, eternal life. He said unto Abraham, in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Verse 26 tells us about the seed now. Unto you first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, that's the seed. That the one that came, that the one that brings us salvation now, his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning every one of you from his iniquity. Christ has now come and he turns everyone of you away from his iniquity. In Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 3, Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, in verse 4, it says, and declare to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Verse 5, by whom we have received grace by that Christ, by the seed, by the Savior, the only Savior of the world, who have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Then in verse 6, among whom are ye also the cult of Jesus Christ. That's the seed. By him, through him, we are called into sonship, into the family of God. Let's look at number two. Number two, the inheritance through the seed, the confirmation. We're coming back to Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 5, he therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Paul the Apostle always emphasizes that it is not by obedience to the law of Moses. It is by faith in Christ. Verse 17. In verse 17. And this I say. That the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ. The law which was 430 years after later. Cannot disannul that it should be made, it should make the promise of non-effect. It was assuring the people that the law could not cancel the effect of the promise of God. That the, pro the law came much later, 430 years after the promise had been given, and that the promise is still standing. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. He gave it to Abraham by promise. And it wasn't for Abraham alone, it's for the rest of the world. It's for all the families of the earth as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. Hebrews 6, 17. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show the heirs of promise the immutability, unchangeableness, the permanence of his counsel confirmed each by an oath. Verse 18, 
It says in verse 18 uh, that by two immutable that by two immutable things in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us. We have strong consolation because of the confirmation of the promise of God and we can lay hold on that promise without any shadow of doubt because God cannot lie. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 it says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who walketh all things after the counsel of his will. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Everything is hinged on Christ. Becoming a believer, a Christian, an heir of the promise of God is said so hinged on Christ receiving the blessings of Abraham and being counted a member of the family of God with real conviction confirmation and assurance based on Christ who first trusted in Christ verse 13 in verse 13, in whom ye trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news of your salvation, in whom also, after that he believed, ye was sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Colossians chapter 1. Reading from verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet suitable to be partakers of the inheritance. Made us fit, suitable, meet, to become partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, in whom we have, not future, we have, because he died for us, we have, because he paid the price, we have, because the promise made to the seed has now been confirmed. We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Remember, the moment you believe on Christ, you have that inheritance. You have the fulfillment of that promise. And the Spirit bears witness in your heart. You're now a child of God. There is a confirmation. Number three now. Number three, we're looking at Galatians chapter three. Reading from verse 19. It says, wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions. This now came as an interruption to come in between in between the promise that had been given to Abraham and then the siege, the coming of the siege, something comes in between and it's the law that came in between the promise and then the provider, the fulfillment, the siege of that promise. Why was that added? Why did it come? Why the interruption of the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come. Till the seed should come. And once the seed has come, 
then the law of Moses will go out of the way. It was there in the interim. It was there as an interruption. But now Christ has come. Now the Redeemer has come. Till the sea shall come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. That is, that law was given through the mediation of the angels. We're coming to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 7. But if the ministration of death reached and engraved in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away that was the problem of the children of Israel they saw that the law of Moses was glorious. An angel had been touched unto them. And then the face of Moses was shining. And they couldn't understand why that glorious thing will pass away, will be taken away. They didn't understand that something more glorious, the new covenant was now coming. And it, it says the ministration and the the ministration of death, written and engraving his stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Which glory? Ministration of death, which glory? The law of Moses, which glory? The old covenant was to be done away. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit, that is, as Christ has come, and by the Spirit is revealed unto us, how will that not be more glorious than in verse 9 in verse 9 for if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory verse 10 for even that which was made glorious Old Testament Old Covenant law of Moses had no glory in this respect by the reason of the glory that excelleth. And then in verse 11, for if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. It's talking about the glory that has now come, which is what we have in Christ. Romans chapter 8, looking at verse 3. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do. The law was deficient because of the nature of the people, because of the carnality of the people, because of the fleshly acts of the people, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent it. His own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Then in verse 4, it says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. The righteousness of the law is now fulfilled in us. We receive Christ, and then Christ lives in us, and the life we now live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God, 
who loved us and gave himself for us. He lives on the inside of us and then we'll walk by his light. We'll walk by his life and we'll walk by his faith and we'll live the victorious life because he abides in us. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the purpose of the schoolmaster in focus. We're coming to Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. It says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterward be revealed. It says, before faith came, before Christ came, and before we had real faith in Christ, we had the law. We were shut up under the law. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. That word schoolmaster, schoolmaster in the understanding of the Greek people was not the head teacher, the headmaster or the proprietor. Those days, parents will have servants. Those servants will take the children to school. And the children, if they don't want to go to school, and they're screaming and crying, that servant will lay hold on them. He was referred to as a schoolmaster. He'll take them to school and force them to get to school. He was not the teacher. He was not the instructor. He was just the servant or the slave that will take that child and take that child to school. What he's saying is the law was a schoolmaster to convict us and to pinch us, to condemn us, to say, you went wrong that way, you went wrong that way, you went wrong that way. All the law is doing is acting as a schoolmaster to lay hold on our hand and to bring us to Christ. That law, that schoolmaster cannot save us, cannot give us assurance of salvation, cannot set us free, cannot instruct us in the way of righteousness. The schoolmaster was just to bring us to Christ through conversion, sends us on our knees with conviction, and then we pray, and Christ himself, the Savior, not the schoolmaster, the Savior now saves us from sin. Look at that verse 24 again. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. Number two, the sons that believe and become God's children. Number three, the sign of truly becoming truly belonging to Christ. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. Already we've read, um, let's look at that again, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up, Unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Until we come to Christ, we cannot be justified by faith. If we are just with the schoolmaster, with the law, with the commandments, we cannot be justified by faith. It is when that commandment convicts us, drives us to Christ as Savior, and that schoolmaster, the law, 
bring source to Christ the justifier that we cannot be justified by faith. Verse 25, in verse 25, but after that faith is come, after that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we're no longer under the school master. After that child in the Greek culture at the first century, after that child had been taken by the schoolmaster, sorry, by the um, school uh, master, yes, to school and sat down and is enjoying the teaching and now he wants the instruction, he wants the teaching, the schoolmaster is no more necessary because now that child has come to school and after we come to Christ, Savior, and we love him, and we listen to him, we enjoy his teaching, we enjoy his life, and we're now voluntarily, wholeheartedly disciples of Christ, and now we listen to him directly. We don't need Moses anymore. The greater one, greater than Moses has come. We don't need the lambs of sacrifice anymore. The final sacrifice, Christ, has now come. And we do not need any instructor of the priests of the Levites anymore. Christ, the greater one and the greatest one, he has now come and will stay with him. That's what he's saying after the faith is come. We are no longer under the school master. He tells us in uh, Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 7. Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 7. What shall we say then? If the lost sin, God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known and lost, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, but sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of evil of concupiscence for without the law without the law sin was dead verse 9 in verse 9 for I was alive without the law was but when the commandment came sin revived and I died Look at verse 24. In verse 24, O wretched man that I am. That's what the law does. The law makes you to understand you cannot save yourself. The law makes you to understand your resolution, your determination, your turning over a new leaf will not make any change. That's what the law does. It makes you to understand that in you, there is no strength, there is no ability by yourself as a man in nature, a woman in nature. There is no way you can obey the commandment of God by yourself. You'll feel wretched. You'll feel powerless. And self and sin will dominate over you until the law holds your hand and brings you to Christ, you'll be crying, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body, from the body of this death. The first part of verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The schoolmaster now brought me to Christ, and I see he's my Savior, I see the one that can cleanse me and wash me whiter than snow. It's the one that can give me salvation, forgiveness, and freedom. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I pray he'll do that in every life in Jesus' name. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. 
verse 39. In verse 39, but by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. In him we have salvation. We can't have that in Moses. Through him we have forgiveness and redemption. We do not have that from Moses. It says all that believe in him they are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Romans chapter 3 verse 19. In Romans chapter 3 verse 19, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it says to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world become guilty before God. That's the office of the law. That's the essence of the law, is to make everyone in the world guilty in the sight of God. Verse 20, in verse 20, therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no man be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24, in verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, we are justified, we are saved, we are forgiven, we are redeemed through the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the sacrifice of Christ, the provision of Christ. It is what Christ has done on your behalf, on my behalf, on our behalf, and we believe that that gives us the freedom, the forgiveness, the salvation, the redemption, not the law of Moses, but the efficacy of the sacrifice of Christ. In verse 24, it says, be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, 25 says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, not faith in your own ability, faith in your own uh, you know, confidence, faith in self-confidence. It is faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission or removal, cleansing of sins that have passed through the forbearance of God. And then in verse 26, we are sure to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Point number two there. Number two, the sons that believe and become God's children. The sons that believe and become God's children. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Not by obeying the law of Moses, by faith in Christ Jesus. What we couldn't have for ourselves, possess in ourselves, do in ourselves, Christ has done that for us. And now we become the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from 
the natural people, the Jewish people, the people that depend on their own strength, and the people that depend on just religion, on the people that believe or depend on the old covenant, come out from among them, the people that are still living in sin, and they do not apply to Christ for salvation, come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, repent, and turn away from every sin in your life, let the schoolmaster bring you fully unto Christ, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The Lord will receive everyone who comes in Jesus' name. In verse 18, and ye shall be, and I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as had led by the Spirit of God, not those who are led by the law of Moses, not those who are guided by the old covenant, not those who are taken and they are being led by the Ten Commandments, but now as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In verse 15, it says, for ye are for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And then in verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. We have repented, we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ has come in. He has made a great change, a great transformation in our hearts. And the Spirit is bearing witness. We are being led of the Spirit. We are living now according to the pattern of the life of our Savior Jesus Christ. We are the children of God. First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. First John Chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now. Before we get to heaven, we have to be the sons of God here before we go to heaven. That's the only condition that we come to faith in Christ and then our lives are transformed and we are changed. Now, are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And then in verse 3, it says, And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The Lord will purge you. He'll purify you. And he will make your life what he thought to be as children of God by faith in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4 it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. In verse 5, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Then in verse 6 it says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. For whosoever sinneth has not seen him, is still living in the old life of weakness, neither known him. In verse 7 it says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. In verse 8 it says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil seen it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to come and do in us.
to come and deal for us, to come and deal with us what the law of Moses could not do. The law of Moses could not change our person, our nature, our personality, our character. The law of Moses could not make us to walk in the way of the Lord. But now for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Then in verse 9, it says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For they for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. We're reading verse 10 now. In verse 10, it says, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not is brother. We'll come to number three. Number three here is the sign of truly belonging to Christ. The sign of truly belonging to Christ. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, for as many of you as are baptized into Christ, not baptized in water, baptized into Christ, immersed in Christ, I in you and you in me, that the Father may be glorified in me. It says, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Verse 28, it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, if you have been baptized into Christ, immersed in Christ, Jew or Greek, the same. There is neither bond nor free, slave or master. If you have been baptized into Christ, you are the same. There is neither male nor female, male saved, female saved, the same new life. It says, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. In verse 29, verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ's, if you belong to Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We put on Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, Ephesians 4, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now we can come to Christ our minds that were dirty, our thoughts that were dirty, our inner life that was dirty, we can come to Christ now and the blood of Jesus will wash us whiter than snow. Amen. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then in verse 24, it says, and that he put on the new man. Get rid of the old man that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's available for everyone. Everyone who comes, everyone who calls on him, everyone who believes on him, the Lord will take the guilt away, the condemnation away, the debt away, and the impossibilities and deficiencies, take everything away, and he will give us his righteousness. And then we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And through life, we'll be able to live in the strength, in the power, in the grace of the Lord, righteous lives. And when he comes to take his son away, he'll take you away to heaven. I said he'll take you away to heaven. And you'll be with him forever and ever in Jesus' name. I'll be there. I'll be there. Rise up and tell the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I come. Here I am. I know what the law could not do. Christ has come and Christ will do it in your life. Pray and believe by faith we enter in.
spiritual inheritance in Christ. And this is speaking of, of the promise of God. Let us receive the Lord for the good and noble thing that God gave to us tonight. Let's bless the name of the Lord for the divine illumination, inspiration that the Lord has revealed to us tonight, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the superiority of Christ. Let's tell the Lord we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. But not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who gave himself for me and died for me. We're going to pray. What made Paul the apostle what he was, was the faith of the Son of God. We want to pray tonight that God will plant the same faith in our hearts. Let's pray the faith, faith for salvation. The faith that saves us from the life of sin. Faith for sanctification. The faith that sanctifies and purifies us. Faith for the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the faith of the Son of God. Faith for spiritual fruitfulness. Faith for soul winning fruitfulness. Faith for ministerial fruitfulness is the faith of the Son of God. Let's pray that the faith that made Paul who he was and enabled him to do what he did, let's pray that God will plant the same faith in our heart. That are from today, we will be living by the faith of the Son of God. Let's pray, oh Lord, that faith that to put and plant in the heart of Paul the Apostle that brought him salvation and made him to be able to live a holy life. Writing to the Thessalonians, and he said, ye are witnesses. And God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves, all by the faith of the Son of God. Let's appreciate the Lord. Let's pray that do the same thing for us. And also, he said, all that I did by the power of the Spirit of God is by the faith of the Son of God. Let's pray we'll be operating, living by this faith up from today. The faith of the Son of God, that the faith that made the old world, he says, what they were. The Lord will do the same thing for us. Put the same thing plant the same faith in our very heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says, as we have read, he that is born of God does not commit sin. Why? Because his seed remaineth in him. We are going to pray that the seed has to have been revealed unto us who is Christ we live in us. In dwelling Christ in his fullness is the secret of the Christian life, the Christian living, the victorious life. Christ living is in us by faith. In dwelling Christ. Christ living in his fullness. Fullness of his grace. Fullness of his power. Fullness of his enablement. Fullness of, you know, everything that he is. Let's pray that Christ, the seed, will live inside us. We'll be experiencing the indwelling Christ. Indwelling Christ, it will become a reality in us. Indwelling Christ, through him, we'll be able to live the Christian life and enjoy the inheritance that we have in Christ. Let's pray that Christ, the seed, there will be a fulfillment of his indwelling within us. In dwelling in his fullness, in dwelling with his power, Christ living in us by faith as the seed within us. And through him, we will be able to enjoy 
all the provisions of Calvary. Let's pray unto the Lord that this will be a reality in our lives. We dwell in Christ. We want him to dwell in all. That Christ will dwell in you by faith. That was the prayer of Paul the Apostle for the Ephesians. And that he may comprehend with all other saying, the breath, the length, and the depth, you know, of our love in Christ. And we come to the fullness of God. That's why the Bible says in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead. Let's pray that this will be a reality in our lives. In dwelling Christ will become a reality in our lives. And through him, we'll be able to enjoy all the promises of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The scripture reveals to all that where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor circumcision, but billion or sake. But, you now say that but God not free. Listen to the last aspect, but Christ is all in all. We want to pray from tonight with the revelation we have got tonight. Christ will be all in all in our lives. Let's pray, oh Lord, that from today we have seen the you know insufficiency of the old testament. He taught the schoolmaster to be able to bring us unto God that are from today. Christ will be all in all. The supremacy of Christ will be a reality in our lives. The superiority of Christ will become a reality in our lives. The sufficiency of Christ will become a reality in our lives. And Christ will become preeminent in all areas of our lives. Let's pray unto the Lord Christ. As I from today, will be all in all. Not the law of Moses, not any human uh, kind of uh, anything whatsoever. But Christ will be all in all in our lives. Let's commit ourselves unto the Lord with this revelation coming to us. The illumination that God has given to us, you can see from the beginning to the end, the emphasis of, to know, of the teaching tonight is about Christ. His sufficiency, his supremacy, his you know, superiority above the Old Testament, you know, Old Testament uh, law. Let's pray unto the Lord, O oh Lord, in my life, let Christ be all in all, all in all, all in all. That's what we're asking for tonight, so that we'll be living day by day by the faith of the Son of God. We'll be living day by day by the indwelling Christ. Christ living in us, in his fullness, in his power, in his greatness, in all in all. Let's pray that this will be a reality in our lives and that from today we we'll continue to experience the supremacy of Christ in our lives, the superiority of Christ in our lives, and we we'll begin to experience the sufficiency of Christ, that Christ will be preeminent in all areas of our lives. Oh Lord, help us to begin to live in the fullness of the revelation you are giving to us tonight, the fullness of Christ from the beginning to the end. Alpha and the Omega. The Bible says we are says we are complete in Him. In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead. Let's pray that God will help us to begin to live us from today in the fullness of the Godhead that is in Christ. It will become a reality in all areas of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, we are grateful unto you. Thank you for the revelation that has come to us tonight. The revelation of your very son. No, the, uh, your very son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you are giving to us. Thank you, Father, for this coming afresh unto us today. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking and from today, O oh Lord, help us to live by the faith of the Son of God. God, by the faith of Christ himself, the faith that made men and women of all what they are, put in our heart, plant in our heart. Oh Lord, do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that the indwelling Christ will become a reality in our lives. The fullness of Christ, the complete 
weakness of Christ and the reality of Christ. Make it our portion, our experience, our heritage and from today in Jesus' name. That through Christ, we'll be able to have both our spiritual inheritance, physical inheritance, ministerial inheritance in all areas through him in Jesus' name. Lord, we're asking that you help us and from this day that Christ will be all in all. In everything we do, in our thinking, in our spiritual life, we pray superiority of Christ will become a reality in our life. See, we did the supremacy of Christ will become a reality in our life. And the sufficiency of Christ will become a reality in our individual lives in Jesus' name. And we pray out from tonight. Lord, with the revelation you have brought to us through your servant, may we continue to live henceforth every time, every day, in the fullness of the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Lord, we're asking you will keep our teacher for us. You preserve our teacher for us, so that next time, new revelation will come. And as you are building us all, and ultimately, may we all, with him, every one of us, make it to the purely gate, Name, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. No. Sea Forest lie less than 10 kilometers north of the Atlantic Ocean, enslaved by same depravities that have plagued humankind globally. Strange diseases, defiling medical interventions, occultism in high dimensions, dishonesty, wickedness, and more to mention. But a single look. A look to the author and finisher signals the authority. It's a power shift. Power from on high upon your life. You've never seen anything like this before. The day when everything that is dead, dormant, dull in your life will rise up. July 28th to August 2nd, 2022, 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT Sunday worship service packaged on a global scale for all. Men, women, ministers and professionals, children, youths and young adults. A total package. F. Kumuyi at the GCK July edition live at Ikorudu, Lagos State, Nigeria. We thank you for another privilege of coming here. Grateful unto you for this evening. We want to thank you very much for today's Bible study. Lord, be exalted in Jesus' name. We've come to you, Lord, to learn at your feet. We pray you teach us tonight in Jesus' name. And as we sing praises to you, O oh God, we pray that you accept us in our praises in Jesus' name. Let your name alone be praised. In Jesus' name we praised. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen. Hallowed be thy name, our Father. Art in heaven, amen. Thy name, our Savior, who has in heaven, amen. Our Lord be thy name, our Father, amen, amen. Our Lord be thy name, my soul. My soul, 
the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh yes, my soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul, my soul. Praise the Lord. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name, for the Lord is good. Sing with me unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name, for the Lord is good. I will sing unto the Lord. A new song, I will praise his name all over the earth. I will sing, I will clap for Jesus his Lord. I will praise his name, he is good to me. Sing with me a joyful song and praise his name. For the Lord is good. Complete, complete, complete in Him. I am complete in Him. Complete, complete, complete in Him. Oh, yes, I am complete in Him. Complete, complete. Complete in him, I am complete in him. Complete, complete, complete in him. Oh yes, I am complete in him. It's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. Is not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. Is not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. I am complete in him. Complete, complete, complete in him. Complete, complete, complete in him. I am complete in him. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know and I'm sure he holds my future. A life is worth a living just because he lives, because he lives, because he lives. Oh, yes, because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he owes my future. A life is worth a living just. Because he lives, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Yes, Jesus lives, all fear is gone. And because we know we're sure he holds our future, our lives are worth living just because he lives. Our bank caught in Jesus. The storms of life are braved. I've anchored in Jesus. I fear no winds or wave. I've anchored in Jesus, for he has power to save. I've anchored in the rock of ages. Oh, yes. The storms of life are braved. Oh, I've anchored. Oh, have anchored. He has passed. 
have been caught in the rock of ages. It is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today in the name of Jesus. Let me hear. 